Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Carrie's Gardening Channel. So, um, what I want to talk to you about today is uh, winged everlastings. Now, this is the first year that I've ever grown this variety of flower. Um, I did a little bit of uh, research on it prior to uh, purchasing it, and um, I really like the blooms of it. Uh, it reminds me of a miniature straw flower. Now, um, winged everlastings, when they fully open, they have a beautiful, uh, like a lemon yellow center in them. And uh, it's a plant that I really enjoy. I am going to continue to uh, be growing it. It does seem to be pretty good for uh, drought tolerant. Now, I'm gardening in Pennsylvania in Zone 5B, and uh, it's 2020, and we are having a drought this year uh, where I'm growing at. And uh, does seem to be handling the drought pretty well. Now, uh, this is a tender perennial in zones 9 to 10. So uh, most people treat this as an annual. Um, it will reseed itself. And uh, this gets about 20 to 26 inches tall. Um, and I just, I love the blooms on it. It just reminds me, like I said, of a little miniature uh, straw flower for the blooms. And uh, this takes uh, a soil pH of 5.5 to 6.5. And uh, it does prefer a uh, well-drained soil. So it doesn't like uh, soggy soil and it doesn't like to be sitting in water. So you want to keep that in mind when uh, you pick a spot to uh, plant this flower at. And uh, I do have videos on my channel for how I start this flower from seed. Now I started mine in the greenhouse and then transplanted them outside. And uh, these bloom in about 70 to 80 days from uh, transplanting. And um, you can see the foliage is a little bit different. Uh, it's kind of like a, a blue, greenish, silverish type foliage. Um, it's very unique, a little bit different. And uh, this plant does like full sun. And uh, it can help attract uh, beneficial bugs to your yard when it's uh, fully open. So that's a good thing. It's always a good thing to have uh, flowers around that the beneficial bugs like so that they uh, come to your yard and then um, help out your gardens. So um, this makes an excellent cut flower. And you want to cut this particular flower when about half of the flower is opened. They will continue to open as they're in the arrangements. And um, this, is, this also makes an excellent dried flower. And you want to cut it the same way. And I have seen these when they fully open. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now uh, this one here does get much taller than this, than what this one, this particular one I'm showing in the video does. Um, where it's growing at, um, the soil is, uh, it's a, like rocky, it has clay in it, but um, it still is growing and thriving despite the drought. And um, the blooms are just a little bit shorter, but um, I have grown it in containers already, it does very well in containers. And uh, it does do good in the ground. You can see one of my plants over here that didn't start blooming yet. Here's one of the plants over here that didn't start blooming yet. It has a very unique foliage to it. And uh, I do like the coloring of the foliage. It uh, really helps to accent the blooms off. At least in my opinion it does. So uh, it's definitely a keeper for uh, my flower bed and for in my uh, containers. So if you like my video, please like, comment, subscribe. Please don't forget to hit the little notification button. I'll tell you when I put a new video on. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'll have a link down in the description for my Twitter account. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day. Bye.